Concerning temperance. Amen. And I, if you would, I want you to follow me over into Galatians, the fifth chapter and the 23rd verse. Amen. Amen. When you have it signified by saying amen. amen. I'm still coming. I'm still coming. Oh, God, I got it now. I'm just going to read one. Galatians 5 and 22. And the Bible says as follows. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, uh -huh. goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Today, uh -huh. I want to explain and define basically the word temperance, which means self-control. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That means to control yourself. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, it's so, it's so, it, it, it's so important yes. to, to, to bear and to embrace this particular fruit because of the promise. Yes. And any time God gives us a promise, before the promise, there's going to be warfare. Uh -huh. yes. Somebody say amen. 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 And, and, and determined, and it is determined by how you respond will determine where you receive what God has for you yes. or you miss it. Hallelujah. And, and the enemy or the, or the, the adversary of self-control, uh -huh. I'm going to use two points, is fear mm -hmm. yes. and frustration. Uh -huh. Somebody say fear. Fear. Now fear, we find fear in during the time of Moses when it was time for Moses to, uh, had told the 12 spies to uh -huh. go over into the land of Canaan and bring back a report. Yes. Somebody said report. report. And there were 10 that came, came back with a report. Uh -huh. And their report was through the eyes of fear. Yes. And, and, and fear told them that we are too small. We will be defeated. Yeah. See, the thing about fear, uh -huh. fear will make you look at your circumstance. Uh -huh. Your fear will make you look at your condition yes. and make you think that you're not able. Yes. It'll make you think that you're inadequate. Yeah. Uh -huh. It'll make you think that, that you're like a grasshopper. Uh -huh. yes. See, fear will tell you that. See, but then there's two that came back that was Joshua and Caleb, uh -huh. and they said that we're more than able to overcome them. Uh -huh. Somebody say overcome. Overcome. Now faith is the, is the opposite of fear. And see, faith, wherein fear makes things make things look big uh, in your sight, but faith will make things look small. Yeah. And the reason faith will make things look small because the God in you is big. Yeah. And, and because the God in you is big, everything around you is small. Yeah. And, and, and so it's so important to look at faith. It's, it's to look at faith to God. And how do you do that? It's by reading your word. Uh, the, the one, one guy told me that I heard this said that the more you, you, you believe, the more you read, the more you believe. The, the, the more you believe, the more you re read. 
and see, and, and the more you read, the more your faith grows. And the more your faith grows, the more your confidence grows. And the more your confidence grows, the more your eyes grow with God. And, and, and the more the devil becomes small. What we the Bible says that he's under our feet. That none can bother bother you because we have dominion over the devil. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now the other element of, of that is opposed to uh uh uh, self control is frustration. Yes. Now we're going with Moses again. Now we're going over. We're going to the point where the children of Israel is at the brink. Yes. They were at the brink of their destiny. Yes. Everything that God had told them that they're going to they're gonna go into the land of milk and honey. They were going to go over. They had been journeying a long time. Uh -huh. But now they're at that place where there's trouble. Yes. Yes. Has anybody been in trouble? Yes. Has anybody been tested? Yes. See, when you've been tested, your place uh -huh. where, where, where your faith uh -huh. has to be activated. Yeah. The question is what you're going to do. Come on. Yeah. When, when troubles come your way, uh -huh. when, when you open up, when you open, you look at your bank account and the money's not there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you believe in God, but that line is still there. Uh -huh. What you going to do? Yeah. It takes faith in God. Right. But let me tell you what Moses did. Uh -huh. God told Moses uh -huh. to, 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 to speak to the rock. But Moses, let me tell you something. Let me go back. Let me tell you something. The thing about fear and frustration, uh -huh. the portals that causes this particular thing uh -huh. is your ears and your eyes. Yeah. It's your ears and your eyes. Uh -huh. And see, your ears and your eyes is, 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 is along with the works of the flesh. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something. In order to get to the nine fruit of the spirit, uh -huh. you must go through the 17 works of the flesh. Uh -huh. You must go through those mountains. Uh -huh. You must go through pride. Uh -huh. You must go through you must go through bitterness. See, some people, let me tell you something. One of the reasons that God has is bringing this message forth is because God, we are at a brink. You're at a place in your life, you're at your promised land. And there's some things that you must shut off. There's some things you must let go of. See, that's what happened with Joshua. See, when Joshua came to his promised land, see, the angel told him he got to take off his shoes. You might ask, Brother Peter, why? He had to take off his shoes. Uh -huh. Well, the problem is when, when he started the journey, those shoes was new. See, but now God don't want his old shoes to go to a new place. See, see, so what God is saying to us today is that what you what you have, God wants you to set it aside. That pride, God wants you to set aside. That fear, God wants you to set aside. That discontent, God wants you to set aside. Somebody say amen. 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 Now, 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 and, and with my because of Moses, because of the frustration of the people, Moses allowed his ears and his eyes to cause him to react and disobey God and miss his blessing. Jesus, hello, somebody. It's very important in this day and time for us to be controlled. In control, the Bible says that a person who controls their own spirit is is is, more, is stronger than the mind. It's so important to have self-control because in self-control, see, the Bible says that it's not what goes in your mouth, but it's what comes out your mouth that defiles a man. So God is looking not not for what someone do for you, but God is looking at what you do, how you respond, because it's in how you respond will determine how you give you blessing. Hallelujah! Come on, give God a hand clap. Hallelujah! Come on, and bless the day. Come on, and bless the day. Now we go along to James. And he told his disciples to be careful how you hear, Apostle. Because he said, how you hear will determine how you respond. Because if you hear wrong, you respond wrong. See, that's what, that's what Moses did. Moses heard wrong. See, because Moses heard his emotions. Moses heard his ears. Moses heard the people instead of hearing God. And he did all of that and missed out on God.
listen, it's an unruly evil. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so, so it is so important to, to govern your tongue. And how do you govern your tongue with the word? Now, and it's been said that in relationships, to follow your heart when it comes to love. Uh -huh. To follow your heart. Uh -huh. Why they find that? Because the Bible said the heart is deceitful. Uh -huh. That's what we will be wicked. Uh -huh. Above all, who can know it? Yeah. So you must govern your emotions. Yeah. You must govern your heart yeah. with the word. Yeah. Because look at Peter. Peter was, was on the boat. Come on. And, and then the stones were raised. Uh -huh. Boss uh -huh. And then Peter saw a word. Yeah. And everything that was noisy around him became quiet. Uh -huh. Why? Because Peter saw the word. See, see, no matter what you're doing, as long as you see the word, God's going to bring you out. As long as you see the word, God's going to bring you food. As long as you see the word, that's all you need. The man, the man at the pool of the dust, where he speaks for 38 years, all the world of us came, and all they, they were jumping in the pool. But this one day, this man, Jesus, came to his name. And the word came to him.
and your tithe is what you're going to do. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. And I feel like it with that word that he just preached. We don't have to have faith. We don't have to have faith. But before we get to faith, I'm going to ask everybody they can show their seed to give their offering. Some of you came with a prepared offering. Man, that's good. That's good. That's good to prepare yourself. But some are going to reap a hundredfold. Some are going to reap a thirtyfold. And some are going to reap a sixtyfold. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to say something, saints of God. Y'all better get in the honoring of hearing the voice of the Lord to obey His Spirit. Oh, and especially in giving. I told my husband many years ago, I said, you know what, baby? We had more businesses and stuff that we didn't we didn't even ask for because we was real givers. Uh -huh. And we started getting like them other church folk. Uh -huh. I'm going to be honest. I'm being real. I'm going to be I'm going to tell my testimony. Leave y'all on. And we started being like them other church folk. This disappeared, that disappeared, that disappeared, that disappeared. But when we gave God, when God gave us back, amen. So look and see what you have for the Lord and be grateful you got anything to give. Amen, amen. 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 And I ask you all to say a prayer with your gift right now. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Heavenly Father, for allowing us for something to give to you, Lord God. We pray that this offering that you want us to sow into the house of transformation is acceptable unto your son. And Lord, somebody's giving and really don't have any give. They trust in you, Lord, and have the Father with their own. And you know they need it more. But Lord, and the Father, I'm asking for you to bust open, Lord God, a breakthrough that they only could ever dream of. Lord, have the Father. Unimaginable expectation to come and surround them, Lord, and have the Father, their household, their family, their purpose, Lord God, their destiny, their new walks in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, have the Father, uh, be a fix all around them, Lord God, their children, their children's children's children, yes. Lord God, even their dogs and their cats, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, and have the Father, to cover your saints like never before, Lord God, like never before, Lord, and the Father, be a witness of protection 25 the day, seven days. So we the best alarm system they ever had, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Alert them, Lord God, when danger is on its way. Lord, have the Father in the mighty name of Jesus, so that you can give them a way of escape. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord have the Father. We thank you for sending this prayer. Lord God, and when we all finish our work here on this earth, Lord God, in the name of Jesus in Christ, I believe the blood of Jesus on every soul, Lord God, that our souls will be eternally with you from day one, Lord God. Will be eternally with you. Even our enemy souls will be eternally with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all will put y'all gifts. Hallelujah. And then the next speaker we're going to hear is Evangelist Lorraine Hoskins from Cold Station.